Hello fellow Python enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Zek, and today we're going to dive into the world of databases with SQL Alchemy, focusing specifically on one-to-one -one relationships. And whether you're a beginner or you're looking to brush up your skills, this video is for you. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Python tutorials. So first, let's understand what a one-to-one -one relationship is in the context of databases. In a one-to-one -one relationship, a record in one table is linked to only one record in another table. You can think of it like a marriage between two people, but instead of people, we have tables. And it's where each record is paired with exactly one record in the other table. And so to get started, make sure you have Python and SQL Alchemy installed. We will also use SQLite for this example. And first we will begin by importing the necessary modules from SQL Alchemy, so the ones that we have here. And then we'll go ahead and set a variable called dburl, and we'll set it equal to sqlite colon forward slash forward slash forward slash database.db. This will be relative to the current file. And so here we'll go ahead and create our engine, and we'll use the create engine function that we've imported up here with our database URL. And then we'll go ahead and create a session object equal to session maker, and we'll bind it to our engine. And then we'll say session is equal to session with the open and close parentheses. This will give us an actual session for our database that we can use to perform transactions or different kinds of operations on the database. And so from here, we'll go ahead and say base is equal to declarative base. And then we'll create a user class inheriting from the base. And we'll say the table name is equal to users. We'll give it an ID as an integer as the primary key. A name column that'll be a string. And then a column of addresses that is a relationship to a class that we're going to call addresses. I will explain the rest of these here in a minute. We'll go ahead and create the addresses class also inheriting from base, giving it a table name of addresses. We will also give it an ID of integer as a primary key, an email, a user ID, and then a user. And this user is a relationship to our user class. Note in here these quotation marks. You can see that in both of these relationships, the first argument that is passed is the stringified version of the class name that we have. So here it has a string with address and this class name is address. So you can do that to declare which table you want the relationship to be with. And this next argument we're passing is backpopulates, telling it to populate that specific column within the other table. So we have the user column over here as a relationship, and we're populating it back whenever we do fill in this address relationship. And then we're setting use list equal to false to indicate that this is just a one-to-one -one relationship. If you don't include this use list equals false, you could have a one to many relationship. And so the same thing goes over into the address class where we have the user. The first argument is the string version of the class name of user. And we have that back populates also as address, which is another field over here. But something that's different here is inside this address class, we have a user ID and it's a foreign key of users.id. This is for us to provide the linking that we need for this one to one relationship. And so once we have these two classes, we can do base.metadata.createAll of our engine. This will go ahead and create both of our tables and all of our columns that we need for our database. And from here, we'll have new user equal to our user object, and we'll pass in the name of John Doe. We will also create a variable called new address, and we'll set that equal to the class address, and we will instantiate it with an email, and we'll say that the user is equal to our new user that we just created, linking this one-to-one -one relationship. And then we'll go ahead and add both of these objects to our session. And since we are setting our user equal to new user here, we don't really need to add this new user to the session. It will go ahead and add it whenever we add the parent object that is part of the relationship. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. And we'll go ahead and commit this to our database to have these records actually in there. So if we go ahead and run this, I will actually get an error because I already have stuff in my database. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I will just go ahead and delete my database. You don't want to do this in a production environment unless you really want to have a fun time. But since I went ahead and deleted my database over here, we'll go ahead and run this again. And I can see that there is no output, meaning that everything worked. And to view the database that I have created, I'm using an extension for VS Code called Database Client. If you have that installed, you can go ahead and come over here and click on the button on the side and create a connection. For this case, we're doing an SQLite database and we'll get the path of it to the current database file and open it and go ahead and connect it. Once this connection is successful, go ahead and save this. 
We'll come over to the left side and this is our active database connection with the database that is in this current directory. So once we go in here, we can see we have the addresses table and the users table. And if we were to click on one of these, we will actually get the data from the table. We can see that is inside the database. And same thing with our users. So if we head back open to our app, we want to see that our relationship was actually created. And so to do this, we can go ahead and use some print statements. So here we are getting our new user and we're getting the name of the new user and the new address that we have, we're getting the email. And then to access the relationship, we will do new user dot address. If we come back up to our user class, we have the address relationship right here. If we access this relationship, it then gives us access to all of the elements inside this table. So we come back down here and we have our new user dot address dot email. And we'll verify that this email is the same as accessing this new address directly. And then we'll say new address dot user dot name. And we'll see that that is the same as new user dot name. And this will just verify that our relationship has been created. So I will go ahead and delete my database since it's going to throw an error. I will actually need to close the connection first. We'll come up here and right click and close connection. Then go back to the Explorer and delete it. So I'll go ahead and run this file again. And we can see that it prints the new user's name of John Doe and the new address dot user dot name is also John Doe. And then the new address dot email and new user dot address dot email are both the same down here in our output. So we'll go ahead and comment all this code out so it doesn't try to recreate and throw an error again. And then we'll actually perform a query here so we can see that the relationship has been retrieved whenever we access data from this database. So here we're having our user is equal to session.query of the user table. And we're going to filter by the name of John Doe since that is our only entry. And we'll get the first entry. And then we'll go ahead and print the user's name and the email from the address. So if we go ahead and run this, we can see it does get John Doe and the address of john at example.com. And so another situation we can have is where we have a class or a table that needs to reference and have a relationship with itself. So an example of this is let's say we have something like a link to list, but we have it in a table format. So we can have a node that points to another node and it can keep going until we get to an endpoint. So we can go ahead and do this by creating a class node inheriting from our base. We'll go ahead and give it a table name of nodes. We'll throw an ID on there as the primary key and a value as an integer and make it not nullable, meaning there has to be some kind of value for it. It cannot be empty inside the database. And then we'll go ahead and throw on here a node ID as an integer with the foreign key of nodes.id referencing this ID from the table. And then we'll have a variable next node equal to a relationship of the node class that we have here to itself. We'll pass it the argument of remote side equal to ID. This is just linking this relationship to the ID of the other table. Then we'll pass another argument of use list equals to false. And so once we have that, we have successfully created the relationship from a table to itself. And to make this output a little bit easier for us, we will declare this double underscore rep or double underscore function inside of our node class. And we'll return an F string of node to see what the current value of this node is and the next node as well. And so we'll go ahead and create everything from our engine. So it'll create this table for us. And then we'll go ahead and declare some variables. So we have node one equals to node with value set to one. And then node two value set to two, node three value set to three. And so here we're going to go ahead and set node one dot next node pointing to node two. And then we'll say node two dot next node is pointing to node three. And so from here, we'll go ahead and do session dot add all and pass a list of all of our nodes. So that way it can be all be added to our database. Then we will go ahead and do session dot commit. And then we'll go ahead and print out all three of the nodes that we created. So we'll go ahead and run this and we can see it printed out node with our value of one. And the next node is pointing to node two. And that one is pointing to node three. And this is for printing the first node, showing the first node is pointing to node two and the second node is pointing to node three. And then when we point node two, it's only pointing to node three. So it's only going to show that in the output. And then node three is not pointing to anything. So it's just pointing to nothing. And this will work pretty well until you have a node that is pointing to some other node inside this current list. So in this case, we have node three and we're pointing the next node equal to node one, which is then pointing to two and two is pointing to three, three pointing to one. So it's just a giant circle going and going. If we go ahead and leave this here and run this, we can see that a circular dependency detected. One way to get around the circular dependency is to create an association table. And we can do this by creating a class and we'll call it node association inheriting from our base. 
and we'll set the table name equal to node association and we'll give it an ID of an integer and make that a primary key. Then we'll set a variable current node ID is a column with a foreign key to nodes.id. And then we'll have a next node ID, which is the exact same thing as current node ID. And so once we have it this way, we can get rid of node ID inside of our node class. And this next node will change up a little bit. So it's still going to be a relationship to itself and use list is going to be false. But we do need to add the secondary table of our association table, whatever you called it in table name. And then we need to specify a primary join showing how this class is going to join with the association table. And so the primary way will be joining this node with the association table when the current node ID is equal to this node.id. And the secondary join will be when the next node ID is equal to this class's ID. And so once we have it this way, we can go and run it and we can see that we no longer have the circular dependency, but there is still a circular dependency, not directly with SQL Alchemy, but within Python code. And this is just a matter of printing here. If we remove this and go ahead and run it again, we can see that it is perfectly fine. And that's how you set up and use one to one relationships in SQL Alchemy. Remember, the key is how you define your models and relationships. You can experiment and change up with different data models and see what you can create. If you found this tutorial helpful, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Python and SQL Alchemy tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the other videos for more coding tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.